Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. I'm Tiffany Shinicki, Director of Campaigns and Initiatives with the National Cybersecurity Alliance. For those of you who don't know, October is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Each week has a different theme, and this week we're focused on cybersecurity careers. We're very excited to have a series of interviews of cyber, cybersecurity professionals come in, and today we have Rod, Rodney Peterson, Director of the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education. So, Thank you for joining us today, Rodney. My pleasure. Thank you, Tiffany, and thanks to the National Cybersecurity Alliance for including us. Yeah, so can you tell us a little bit about the NICE initiative and uh, uh, your role there? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm proud to be the director of the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, otherwise known as NICE. Uh, NICE is in the NIST, uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology in the Department of Commerce, but it's really uh, effort to promote and energize an integrated ecosystem of cybersecurity education, training, and workforce development. So we work across government and with academia and industry, and we do that in a couple ways. We lead an interagency working group within the federal government that includes a lot of the federal government partners who are building the nation's cybersecurity workforce. And then we have a nice working group that's open to academia and the private sector to meet and work on a regular basis towards some common solutions. And we also bring that community together annually in a conference, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, the annual NICE Conference and Expo, November 7 and 8 this year in Dayton, Ohio. And so it's really an effort to build a community of effort to help raise um, the level of effort to increase our cybersecurity workforce through education, training, and career changes. That's wonderful. I know there's a huge gap in cybersecurity workforce, and um, I'm glad you're there to lead the charge. So a lot of people don't know that there is a career in protecting the internet. It takes a lot of different skills, a lot of different types of people. Um, can you talk about what it really means to have a career in cybersecurity? I think the word cybersecurity for a lot of people, uh, they don't know what it means, or they have an idea, or it's just the IT guys. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure, absolutely. And in fact, that is one of our challenges and probably one of the things NICE is best known for is that we publish a NICE cybersecurity workforce framework. In fact, it was published as a NIST special publication for the first time in August of this year. And it's really a way to create a common taxonomy and a lexicon for talking about cybersecurity work. Uh, it's challenging for not only job seekers or parents who are trying to encourage their children to pursue those careers, but it's equally challenging for employers who don't know how to form and develop their cybersecurity workforce. So that NICE framework talks about seven broad categories of work, drills down into 32 specialty areas and over 50 work roles. And that really il illustrates the variety of work that's available in a cybersecurity career, which a lot of people don't understand. You know, for example, one of the seven categories is called protect and defend. And that pretty so sounds pretty core to cybersecurity to protect and defend you know, people's personal information, computer systems, and networks. And there's a lot of both technical as well as kind of process-oriented careers and roles that can go into that. Uh, perhaps something people don't think about, though, is another category, which is called operate and maintain, which is some pretty traditional IT roles, but we need system administrators, network engineers, database developers who have a cybersecurity bent. And so that's where the work roles come in, that they may not consider themselves a cybersecurity professional, but a significant amount of their work is to do that kind of cybersecurity work that we're trying to uh, encourage. Uh, and just one more example, which I think is gonna be even more important over time, is a category called securely provision. And that includes research and development roles. So a lot of our academics and faculty or students pursuing PhDs uh, are gonna be researching and developing next generation solutions. Certainly coding and software developers are in that securely provision category. And the point there is that as we move over time to maybe more automation that might displace some cybersecurity jobs, or certainly the internet of things and other advances in technology, we're gonna increasingly need a workforce to make sure that security is built in at the start and by design. And so that securely provision is already the number two job category. And Hopefully, if people start to understand the value of cybersecurity, that will become one of the most important jobs in the future. Great. Well, I definitely think it's one of the most important jobs. <laughs> um, I know there are so many different pathways to get into a career in cybersecurity. I think uh, this month we focused on someone who began their career in opera and transitioned to be a cybersecurity professional. Not to say that that's conventional in any way whatsoever, but there are so many different ways right. people can get in, into the field. 
Um, what would you say to somebody out of high school or a vet or somebody who's been in their career, um, you know, at the later stages of their career and they're looking for a change um, into cybersecurity? What would you recommend to them? How is it possible? Do you need a master's degree? Do you uh, need undergrad? How can you get into the field? Right. In fact, as you described, there's no single pathway. There's a variety of ways that people can enter cybersecurity careers. Sometimes it can be traditional education, you know, whether it's high school, community college, university. As you described, it could be somebody who's already been working for several years and want to change careers. Uh, it could certainly be somebody like a retired uh, a veteran who's going to retire from the military who wants to begin a new career or that next career. So pathways can be a little limiting and a little misleading because there are, we often talk about ramps in terms of on ramps and off ramps because there's very different parts of your career or your lifetime where you might stop or start a career. So that's the exciting thing about cybersecurity. There's no single best pathway there as you described. It, you can come from a variety of academic or disciplinary backgrounds. In fact, we really think it is an interdisciplinary profession that requires the best thoughts across a broad spectrum of people. We often talk about diversity, which is very important because we have an underrepresentation of women and minorities uh, and even veterans to some extent in the cybersecurity workforce. And given the shortage, those are natural populations to target and encourage to participate. But diversity also includes diversity of thought and diversity of background. So I think that is really important to consider. But again, back to the NICE framework. The NICE framework doesn't place a value or premium on academic degrees or on certifications or even on workplace experience. It fundamentally talks about tasks to be performed and the knowledge, skills, abilities that you need to perform those tasks. And so we really believe strongly that the way you learn is through hands-on learning, where you can develop those knowledge and skills. And the best way for an employer to be confident that that prospective employee has that knowledge and skills is through performance-based testing. And that can be done in an academic setting. It can be done through training, but it can be done through an apprenticeship program, through a cooperative education program, and quite frankly, on-the-job experience. So there are both a variety of jobs, as we said earlier, but a variety of pathways for getting there. Great. And so what about younger kids? I would say parents these days, you know, encourage them to be lawyers or doctors. Um, why should parents or how could parents encourage their kids to be a cybersecurity professional? Yeah, well, first and foremost, if you're looking at job opportunities, there's no shortage of job opportunities in cybersecurity. In fact, one of the things that NICE funds is a website called CyberSeek and CyberSeek.org is a place that parents, guidance counselors, job seekers, or even employers can go to to really understand the job market for cybersecurity, not only at the U.S. or the national level, but a state-by-state -state level, and even at a specific metropolitan level. And then it also provides that same type of data according to the NICE framework categories that I described earlier. So there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of options. I think it's a very exciting mission. When you think about what cybersecurity people are trying to do collectively, it's something that's critical to our national security and our economic prosperity. So you can't help but go to work every day thinking that you're on a mission, a very important mission, and it's a challenging and rewarding job. And then finally, I would add that it's also a rewarding career, not only because of the mission, the type of people you work with, the outcomes you get to observe, uh, but it pays very well. And the CyberSeq website kind of ver um, verifies that in terms of salary information. So if you're trying to understand how much different types of jobs or careers will pay. But this issue of introducing kids in particular to cybersecurity careers is, is really important. That's why I'm really glad you all are making the focus this week. Uh, NICE will also in a few weeks, November 13th through 18th, have a National Cybersecurity Career Awareness Week as part of Career Development Month because we need to increase the awareness of teachers, of guidance counselors, of parents, and many others who are influential on young children's career paths just by exposing them to people that are doing the work and also kind of helping to guide them through both the academic pathways and the career pathways that will lead them. Yeah, I know from a personal perspective, I, you know, about six years ago, fell into cybersecurity, mm -hmm. um, and I love it. So I think it's it's a great career to go into, and recommend anybody who's watching today to share this uh, with with your family, with your friends. If you're in cybersecurity, if you're not in cybersecurity, 
um, hopefully we provided a little bit of insight into uh, the profession. And stay tuned all week. We'll have a series of uh, additional cybersecurity professionals coming in to talk about the resources that are available. Also, um, the resources that Rodney had mentioned we'll share on our Facebook page as well so that you can just click, click through and, and access that. So stay, stay tuned for the rest of this week. Uh, check out our Facebook page. Please share this and uh, use hashtag cyberware. It's still not too late to get involved in National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Thank you.